Hey guys, welcome to part 4. Today we're going to finish the chat application. We're going to make it possible to send and receive messages to the, each of the users. So the first task is to make it possible to send messages. So we can begin by going to room.html and then we need to make it possible to get the username down here. So we can create one more directive from Django here called request.user.username Oops, should be lowercase u. Now we can pass it into one of these. Just rename this to JSON username. Now we can also make a copy of this and replace here with username. And then replace room name with username here as well. And then the next step is to send the messages from this place. And to do that we can listen for click on this submit button. So down here below this just add a comment for separation. Then we can say document dot query selector. And here we can find the chat message submit. Oops, submit. And say on click. So we listen to the on click event. And we create a new function where we pass in the event like that. And then the first thing we can do there is to get the message content from this input field. So we create a new variable message input DOM. This is the element itself because we need it to reset it afterwards. Now we can get the message by saying const message equals now we just a message input DOM dot value. And then we need to send this using the chat socket. So chat socket dot send and now we can stringify this using json, json.stringify, because then it's easier to use in the backend. So I create a new object like that. And what we want to send here is the message. And then the username, which we get up here. I want to use lowercase here. And I also want the room, room name, like that. So now this should be sent to the backend. And when that's done, we can reset this field by saying message input DOM dot value equals empty value and save. Then we also want to make it possible to receive the message here because when this is done, it's just sent to the backend. But we can also listen to this here when we get it back from the server. Then first we create a new object called JSON where we parse the data we get from the server. Now you can check if this message has been filled out or if there is anything wrong by saying if data dot message. Then we know that there is a message from the server. If not, we can show an alert message. Alert. The message was empty. And if it's not empty, we want to append it to the list of messages in here. So I can copy one of these objects here or elements and paste it in here. And then I create a new variable called let HTML equals with this line and then HTML plus equals. Now we used this to paste in or show the username here by saying data.username. And this is also the same you will get when we get messages for everyone else. That's why you need to use the username from the object and not your username. Now we can close the paragraph like that. And then also here HTML plus equals. And then we show the message instead of this hard coded message. So plus data dot message and then we close the paragraph element like that. And when that's done, I want to insert it into the chat messages element. Sorry, I need to add this slash div here like that. And to append it to the HTML inside there, we can just use the query selector to get this ID, which is this one. And then we just say inner HTML plus this HTML we generated here. 
So now everything in the front end should be okay, but we still need to do a few things in the back end because we need to make Buzzbolt receive the message there and broadcast it to the whole channel. So if I go back to the consumers.py file, below the disconnect we can create a new async function. So async def receive, pass in self and text data. And then text data is the JSON string that we created. And then we need to use JSON, which we have imported at the top there, to create a JSON object for us. Data equals JSON.loads text data. So now we have a data object we can use here. And from this we can get the message, the username and the room. Message equals data. Then we get the property by saying this and pass in message there. You can use the same thing for username and room. So username and room. Like that. And then we can send it to the group by saying await self.channel underscore layer dot group send and then in here we want to send it to self dot group in a room group name and the object we want to send is type chat message this will be used later here in the back end and the message we want to send message and the username and the room. So just copy these two, copy and paste, and then the same with the room. So now this will receive the message from the front end, and then this will take it further and send it out. Then we need to create a new method called chat message, which will be called. So async def chat message was in self and event and the event will contain these three variables so then I can copy this again and just paste it in here and instead of saying data message we say event message like this so now we have it here and we can use it to send it to the room and we send it by saying await self.send and text data equals json dot dumps so now we convert it again to json and not an object or dictionary and information we want to send is the message the username and we can also send the room just so it's there and save so now we should be able to test this so there are no errors in the console. So I can go here, join a room. Then I can open up the inspector. Try to send a message. Hello. Submit. Okay, I got the CSRF token error. And the reason for that is that if I go back here again now and into room.html, then here when we send this, or this is submitted, I should say e.prevent default, so it's not submitted. It's handled here, and then return false at the end. And we can save and try again. Hello, submit, and now it was appended there. Perfect. So the problem now is that if I refresh, this message is gone because it just lives in the memory of the server. So that is the next step, store the messages in the database. And I also want to remove these hard-coded messages. So if I go back here, I can scroll up and I can find them here. Just remove it like this. So then if I now find the to-do list, I can set this task to done. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And then I want to make it possible to store the messages in the database. So if I open up room slash models.py, we can create a new database models for the messages. 
class message and I want to pass in the models.model like that and then the first thing I need is a reference to the room this model here so room equals models dot foreign key pass in room here and set the related name to messages so it's easy to get them later and if we delete a room I also want to delete the messages so on delete models dot cascade and I want the same type of reference to the user who has created this message so user then you pass in the user object instead of the room and then also need to import this so from django.contrib.auth.models import user so now we have the user database model as well and I want one field for the content so content equals models.text field and when it was added date added equals models dot date time field and this can be set to auto now add equals true so it's added automatically when we save this in the database and we can also set the ordering so we don't have to think about that later so class meta ordering equals create a tuple and say date added and remember to add this comma here and save so then I can update the database by saying python manage.py make migrations and also the migrate script great so then I can run the server again so if I then open up views.py in the room app here where we get the room I also want to get the messages and to get them I can say messages equals message dot objects dot filter room equals room so we get each all of the messages connected to this room but I only want the 25 first so add this slice here so you can see here that this was automatically imported as well and then to make the messages available I need to append it to the context down here like that so then I can just go back to room.html and loop through them in here for message in messages and for now I can make a copy of the HTML from down here like that just remove this and this the div to the next line just do some cleaning and here I can use message dot user dot username since we have access to this object and instead of saying data this message we say message dot content and save great so then I can just refresh to see that everything is working there are no errors and no messages so then I just need to fix a few things in the back end and everything here should be working so if I go back to the consumer then I can import the models here from dot models import message and room because I need both of them and I also need to import the the Django user so from Django dot contrib dot auth dot models import user then we have imported everything we need and now I want to use this sync to async we have imported earlier so at the bottom of these methods I can add this decorator at sync to async this makes it possible to store things in the database while we use this await so we store and we wait till it's finished and then def because this is not the asynchronous view this is a synchronous view save message self username room message I want to pass in all of these variables and then 
since we now have the username, I want to get the user object from the database by saying user equals user dot objects dot get where username equals username. So we get the user based on what we send from the front end. And I also want to get the room by saying room equals room dot objects dot get where slug equals room since the slug is what we pass in in the front end. And then we can create a new message object by saying message dot objects dot create. We say user equals user. So it's connected to the user. And we can connect it to the room. Now we set content equals message, which we get there. So now that we have this function for storing messages, we need to call it by scrolling up a little bit. So before it's sent to the group, we can store it in the database by saying await self.save message, pass in username, the room, and the message, like that. So when we now use await, we wait for this synchronous view to finish before it continues to sending it back to the chat rooms. So we can try this now by saying hi, submit. So if I refresh now, it's still here. Great. And if I go here now, I refresh in a different browser and try to send hello back from admin. And now it appeared here as well. Perfect. So now I can set this task here as well to done. And the problem you can see now for the last task, which is that we need to scroll to the bottom, is that when you have very many messages here, the page will become very long. So I want to add a maximum height to this and automatically scroll to the bottom. So if I go now to the base.html file, I can add a little bit of styling here. We can say style and then dot, dot chat messages. We can say height is 400 pixels and overflow y auto. So when it's more than 400 pixels, it will automatically start to scroll. So we can test this now. Yes, you can see here that I now can scroll the content. But I want to be able to be sent to the bottom automatically when we send messages. So if I go back to room.html again, so I can create a new JavaScript function for scrolling to the bottom at the bottom of here. So function scroll to bottom. And then I want to get this element here called chat messages. I think I have it here as well. So I can copy this and then I can say const object div equals document query selector. Then I get this and then object div dot scroll top equals object div dot scroll height. So this will now automatically scroll to the bottom. And I want to trigger this when we load the application. So copy and paste there. And I also want to call this when we get a message from the server. So load there, I can add it as well. So we can go back now and try this by refreshing. And then you see that we are automatically at the bottom. Try to send a message as well. And then you see that we've got scrolled to the bottom. Perfect. And that was it for this series. Please check out my website codewithstand.com where you can learn how to build a Slack clone using the same technology. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below. See you in the next video.